I wanted to give you a report on this. The Orthodox Union certifies Israeli brand of lab-grown meat as kosher, but not parava. This was just reported on September 8, 2023 by Jackie Hodgdenberg from the GTA, the Orthodox Union, and they put their little symbol on the products that's O with a U inside of it. The Orthodox Union has granted kosher certification to a type of lab-grown meat, a decision that could signal an expansion of the options available under Judaism's intricate dietary laws. The OU, the most prominent kosher certifier in the United States, recognized poultry products from Israeli startup Supermeat as kosher. The company announced this on Wednesday. The startup is part of a growing industry that aims to provide an alternative to traditional meat by creating the food in a laboratory from stem cells. So they want to take what God gave as the best and try to play God with stem cells. This collaboration aims to bridge the gap between scientific understanding and halakhic adjudication, setting unprecedented standards in the cultivated meat industry. Rabbi Menachem Ganak, the CEO of OU Kosher, said in a statement using a term referring to Jewish law, the process of certifying lab-grown meat, a years-long quest for super meat, demonstrated the complexity of applying Judaism's age-old dietary laws to a culinary landscape where the range of foods and how they are produced is expanding rapidly, from lab-grown meat to plant-based alternatives and more. It may also represent yet another increase in the number of products kosher consumers can take off supermarket shelves. This step represents our commitment to inclusivity and respect for diverse dietary needs, making our cultivated chicken meat accessible to audiences around the world. Well, we don't want it. That was a statement by Edo Severe, CEO of the Supermeat, said in a statement, We believe this historic initiative with the Orthodox Union not only broadens the options for kosher consumers worldwide, but will also set clear guidelines for other companies in the cultivated meat industry seeking kosher certification, opening new avenues for the kosher food industry. The lab-grown meat industry is in its infancy and may appeal to consumers who enjoy eating meat but oppose slaughtering animals for food. It remains to be seen whether lab-grown meat produced at a mass scale will be cheaper or more environmentally sustainable than regular beef or poultry. The U.S. Department of Agriculture granted its first approval for cell cultured meat in late June and Super Meat First plans to roll out its products in the United States. Thanks but no thanks Israel. We don't want it. The company is also looking into halal certification. The vast majority of the vegan vegetarian movement is very supportive. 
Super Meats co-founder and CEO Kobe Barak told the Jewish Telegraphic Agency in 2016, and we thank them for really supporting us. On the surface, kosher certification for lab-grown meat doesn't appear to herald a revolution for observant Jewish eaters, especially in places where traditional kosher animal products are already easy to find. As with regular chicken, the OU has certified the lab-grown variety as kosher meat, meaning that it can't be eaten with dairy products. That separates it from recent plant-based meat alternatives such as Impossible Foods or Beyond Meat, many of whose products are certified as parava. Neither meat nor dairy, meaning that they may be eaten together with all kosher foods. Plant-based meat has provided a pathway for observant Jews to eat imitations of some archetypical non-kosher foods such as cheeseburgers or pizza with a meat topping. Super meat will not offer those kinds of possibilities. But Ganak said that for Jews who keep a stringent form of kosher laws, super meat certification will be a boon. Theoretically, the impact on prices and availability should be significant, he said. That's because the company's chicken products are categorized as Mahadran kosher, the strictest form of kosher supervision. And if the Orthodox Union moves to certify lab-grown beef as kosher, which it has yet to do, it could lead to an increase in the supply of meat that is glat kosher, a term that refers to meat slaughtered from an animal whose lungs are smooth. Okay. Um, the kosher seal of approval came after Super Meat hosted two rabbinic delegations and kosher authorities held a series of conversations on Jewish law surrounding the science used in the company's technology, Times of Israel reported. Obtaining kosher certification for lab-grown meat is complicated because the process of cultivating meat from stem cells requires the use of living animals, and kosher law bars the consumption of any part of a living animal. That's part of the Noahide laws, don't you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. Founded in 2015, Super Meat's lab-grown poultry avoids this dilemma by acquiring stem cells from eggs rather than from the living birds themselves. And because the eggs are at an early stage of fertilization, there's no concern that blood will end up in the product, which would also be prohibited by Jewish law. We were looking for something that can be universally accepted as Mahadran completely kosher, and that's what taking the stem cells from the eggs represents, Ganak said. The cells are planted in a meat fermenter that stimulates a bird's biology. In the fermenter, the cells are provided with heat, oxygen, and plant-based liquid nourishment. Mmm, yummy. They then mature into meat tissue and grow quickly doubling in mass in just a few hours. When the meat is ready to harvest, the liquid feed is removed. <sighs> How much more of this rubbish can we take, you think? Other Orthodox rabbis, such as Israeli Ashkenazi Chief Rabbi David Lau, have ruled that some lab-grown meat labeled as a meat alternative could be considered parava. Ganak said that at the Orthodox Union there were different opinions on how lab-grown meat should be classified, but the agency decided to mark it as meat because it's derived from an animal and looks exactly like meat. So now they're going to be messing with the food and not labeling it? That's not right. Leading rabbis in the conservative movement came to the same conclusion in 2018, ruling that lab-grown meat of kosher animals would be kosher, but that disputes over its status and possible confusion 
meant it could be considered meat. Cultured meat should be designated as meaty, according to the rabbis, even though there will be no need for kosher slaughter, inspection, or injury, deveining, soaking, or salting to remove blood, wrote Rabbi Daniel Nevins, the author of the legal opinion on the topic that was accepted most unanimously by the movement's law committee. Ganak noted that lab-grown pork will remain off-limits because it is derived from a pig, which is not kosher. The OU also declined to give certification to impossible pork, even though it is plant-based because of what Ganak called sensitivities to the consumer. Anything which you derive from something non-kosher itself is not kosher, he said. If you milk a non-kosher animal, the milk is also non-kosher because it derived from a non-kosher source. So what does it say in the New Testament? Again, I will review this scripture as I have in past videos. 1 Timothy 4. This is in warnings against false teachers. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Do you know what the title of that set of verses from 1 Timothy 4 is? It's called the Great Apostasy. So, they're commanding people to abstain from meats that God blessed and gave to us to eat. Listen to what Exodus 16.12 says. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. That's God speaking. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. So in Exodus 12, here's what God commanded Moses. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that's in the basin and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. So they were supposed to roast the lamb and partake of eating it according to God's ordinances. So God did not tell the people to go make lab-grown meat from cells from an animal's body. So where they get the idea that this is okay with God is beyond me. To me, it's grotesque. It's not what God said to do. And they're disobeying the law of God by making this acceptable under Jewish law. Take, for example, Deuteronomy 12:21. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far away from you, you may slaughter animals from the herds and flocks the Lord has given you, as I have commanded you, and in your own towns you may eat as much of them as you want. And usually I read King James, but when you get on the Bible app, the first one on the list is the NIV, so I just read that version. And as I said once before in a video, the reason why when Daniel the prophet, he was a prince of Judah along with the other princes and they sat around King Nebuchadnezzar's table and Daniel 
refused to eat the meat of the king because it was offered up to idols and not the one true God. So this meat was defiled by pagan idols and offered to them. So Daniel would not participate in partaking of it. And this is why he ate the vegetables when he did. So I think there's a lot of people that get that verse wrong and they think that you should become a vegetarian because Daniel ate vegetables. You know, but he was doing this because he knew it was an abomination and an affront to God. And if you pray over the meat that the Lord gives you, which I always pray over my food, it's sanctified by prayer. And, you know, if you're offering thanks to the creator of the universe for the meat that he's provided for you, and thanking God for the life of the animal, I even pray, as I've said before, for the animal to have eternal life, and thank God for its nourishment. So, it's not to be a big turnoff to have meat, you know, and some people can't survive without the meat. There's certain nutrients in meat, and, you know, to put these Jewish laws on this meat is, to me, it's like going against God and trying to be a God by creating something from something that doesn't, exist and you're trying to grow a hunk of meat in a lab no thank you you know I don't want those people's food and that's why this crazy globalist group is trying to you know price out meat especially beef where you can't you know afford to get it and um, it's absurd what they're doing and I'm praying to God that God stops them all and one of these days, justice is coming, and we're not to be subjected to all of their rules and laws and regulations that they decide is okay. We go by the word of God, and God said, you know, that we can take from amongst the herd, slaughter the animal, and have the meat, and have as much as we want. So, fully on the evil globalist demonic group, the scarlet harlot that's orchestrating all this over there in Israel, in Jerusalem. Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. So, this is just one of the things they're trying to do with their tech intelligence and messing with our world. So, I just pray that God watches over all the animals. Every one of them belongs to him. He knows them by name, just like he knows the stars by name. And everything belongs to him. So be thankful for what you're given. You know, if God provides a vegetable garden for you, be so thankful that you have that. You know, I used to grow tomatoes and cucumbers every year, and I had a little garden, and now I can't do anything. So... It's crazy, you know. Well, I'm going to go for now. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good evening. Keep eating chicken, keep eating meat, and pray that people with wisdom would get in power positions in the government to knock out all of this ridiculous thing they're trying to make a law. All right, well, shalom for now. Good night.